Shalom Aleichem, Alex. Aleichem, Shalom, Henry. Hey, mein Name ist Henry Nussbaum. Äh, und ich zusammen mit meinem Freund Alex Daphner wollen dokumentieren der Melbourne Jüdisch Jugendtheater. Ihr Anfang, ihr Vorstellungen und die Persönlichkeiten, welche haben gespielt, eine wichtige Rolle in ihr Aufbau und ihr Aufbau. Wie man sagt, die, was haben geschleppt im Wagen. Das ist ein guter Ausdruck. Hey. Und wir tun das im Namen von der jüdischen Arbeiterbund und der Kadima. Bei Schittwestlichen Organisationen, welche predigen das jüdische Wort und Kultur. My name is Henry Nussbaum and today, together with my friend Alex Daphne, we're going to outline the journey of the Melbourne Yiddish Youth Troop, uh, affectionately known as MYYT. It was no accident that this vibrant Yiddish theatre group blossomed in Melbourne. It had an active community promoting Yiddish via the organisations, the Bund, and its youth organisation, Skiff and Zukunft, the Kadima and the David Hermann Theatre, and the Yiddish schools. They all sowed the seeds of an artistic, creative Yiddish environment. Yes, Henry, uh, that's very true. And of course, Yiddish theatre in Melbourne started as far back as 1908. But it really got going in the 20s and 30s when Jakob Ginter, who was already an experienced actor from uh, Poland, began uh, the Yiddish theatre in Melbourne. He called it the Yiddish Biene. And uh, then in 1938, the well-known Polish Jewish actress Rochel Holzer and her husband, uh, the theatre critic Chaim Rosenstein, came here. They actually mm -hmm. came to visit her sister, but of course, events took their turn. The war broke out and she stayed here, much to our uh, you know, benefit. So she became involved in the theatre here. And then Jacob uh, Janka Weislitz came in. Uh, 1939, uh, he got stuck here, so to speak. And they, together with the Yiddish Abina, formed the David Herman Theatre, which had about 50 plus years of wonderful shows, performances here to large audiences. And they were joined by people uh, who came after the war, people, talented people such as Yasha Shur, Shia Tigl, Rocha Levita, Leal Zucker. Uh, Moshe Potashinsky, Mila Weislitz, and many, many others. Yeah. Well, let's go back to the MYYT. Over the 20 years of its work, the MYYT created lots of acting, learning, and managerial opportunities for hundreds of young people, not all of whom who were members of the MYYT, and hopefully pleasure to thousands of Yiddish lovers in the audiences. Uh, the Skiff and Sukhoff members really provided the talent of the MYYT and the Bund events and cultural evenings, commemorations, celebrations is where we really honed our skills. <laughs> the word yes. youth was really uh, in, the, in our name was a relative term since most of the members of the MYYT were adults, but just a little bit younger than the David Hammond players. <laughs> And personally, yes, let me say, Alex, that the MYYT was a vehicle that challenged and enriched my life, resulting in enduring friendships and an understanding of how collaboration by varied and skilled and talented people make theatre. <laughs> so yes, indeed. Uh, yeah. I found the same thing. It gave me a lot in my uh, youth and life. And interesting that you say about the distinction between uh, youth and the older group. But in fact, we were constantly being refreshed by young people who uh, these days still are doing theatre. And uh, uh, the next generation, so to speak, uh, Galit Klaas, Tommy Kalinsky, Evelyn Crape, and others who are Joe Tiggle, uh, who are continuing with the Yiddish theatre, Elisa Gray. And uh, it's wonderful to see that those generations are still there and performing and acting and doing a fantastic job. So let's us disappear off the screen and go through that whole history. I hope people Looking enjoy the video. Looking forward to it as well, Henry, thank you.
Hi, Alex, we're back. Yes. <laughs> and I think in the introduction, I recall you mentioned that the Megillah that Faye produced and directed was really the start of our theatre troupe. Yes, very much. So it inspired uh, a whole generation, I'd say, um, to, you know, do Yiddish theatre. The joy we got out of it uh, led us on to do other things. And I mean, Faye was instrumental in that, of course, uh, but w this was really the genesis. A look at the next years in 1974, how busy we were really um, in the Zwei Wochen uh, in, in Kinneret, uh, the price, the Kishef Machen, und zweimal 100,000. We were, 1974 turned out to be a very creative and productive year and was the year that the MYYT was formed early in 1974, which we'll deal with in another slide in a moment. Yep. Very, very productive, uh, busy year. Yep. And uh, we can see the rest of the performances that we held uh, until 1998, and um, with the last performance being Fiddler Eifendach, which Arlette Pat directed and produced together with Jerry Diner. Yes, that was already almost uh, a generational change with uh, a lot of younger actors being picked up on the way, um, just as we started with the Megillas, quite young. Uh, by the time we went through to 1998, you had a whole crop of uh, young talent coming through, uh, again, re reviving the MYYT. So Alex, let's start at the beginning. The Megillah was the first play. Faye directed this and three shows in Melbourne at the Kadima in 1969. And then in 1970, in March, I recall, we went to Sydney for two shows. I think you're right. And uh, we played at the Folks Centre, which wasn't a proper theatre like the um, Kadima's classic theatre. But still, we did a reasonably good job, I thought, there. And it was exciting, you know, in those days to go to Sydney as, as a teenager or uh, even as a young adult was, it was really a big deal. And I remember there was a, a good little orchestra because I was part of that. They didn't trust my acting talents then. Um, so I remember Helen Coles, Gus playing bass, David Amps, the clarinet, and Ich hab gespielt and Fiedel. I played the bi yeah, violin. Yeah, Libis given Yiddel mit Eifen Fiedel. I played Haman, the Harosha, <laughs> uh, the wicked Haman. And I had trouble hitting some of the notes in there because I'm no singer. But uh, otherwise, I really enjoyed the play. And of course, I already had a moustache, so I could twirl that very nicely. And I remember we were billeted out to various people while we were staying in Sydney. So really, the, probably the first um, production was Zwei Wochen in Kinneret, where we were almost um, considering ourselves as a troupe. And here are some of the photos um, from the rehearsals, I believe. Um, the cast yes. with Zvi Stolper, you remember him well, no doubt. Very well, yes. Um, I, I was the go-between, so to speak, for Zvi Stolper. They were staying on Fitzroy Street, I think, in the George Hotel, one of those. Him and Lea Koenig, the very well-known Yiddish and Hebrew actress, one of the great grand dames of uh, the Habima and uh, the Israeli theatre scene. But uh, Tzvi Stolpa was quite a character, very charismatic, bigger than life character. I think he was Romanian originally. And uh, he had some wonderful sayings to make us act better. Uh, Henry, no doubt you'll remember some of them. <laughs> and I do remember. I remember him telling me, I remember him telling him that a waiter, because I was a waiter in this restaurant where, where the main characters meet, 
And there you uh, are in the left hand constantly. corner. That's right. That the waiter doesn't do this. A waiter wouldn't do that. <laughs> Not having ever waited tables, I <laughs> take his word for it. Yeah. And uh, well, I remember one episode where, um, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner, the photo, I had to kiss uh, Faye Mokoto and I was quite timid about it. And he he pulled me aside enough Yiddish because yeah, I kissed me a maidel and he took her away from me and he gave her a real passionate kiss and Faye was a true professional and dealt with it and just kept moving on and <laughs> gave me gave me some incentive to kiss her differently as well. Yeah, I also think that the light uh, cookie uh, Henry Ozawiki was in the reserves and I think he got the uniforms from the Australian reserves. He borrowed yeah. them from his mates there. The only other thing the I remember with, with Svi Stolpe is his saying um, when we were at rehearsal and we had a gap in our um, speech or dialogue, uh, he, he also got a bit angry once and he said, in Azar Loch, gate men pishen, gate the oil and pishen. pishen. <laughs> The, the other thing is, of course, the the play was a, a sort of a romantic uh, drama, and it was uh, set in um, uh, just after the Six Day War, uh, but it was played after the Yom Kippur War, and uh, the play is about a young couple that are in love and so on, and and the soldier, uh, that's you who played that soldier, gets killed. Um, never comes back and it was particularly poignant because we'd been through the Yom Kippur war which was a tragic very tragic war for Israel uh, just uh, previously that year well let's uh, go on uh, really the next uh, uh, chronological uh, piece is the fact that um, the the youth theater was formed shortly after the Zwei Wochen in Kinneret and uh, highlighting here some of the meetings that we had in the months following that and um, through to July in 1974 and some of the topics that we we discussed and and Faye Mokotov interestingly was the first president there were 16 people present at the first meeting and there was a, we had a visitor from New York then George Roth from uh, New York uh, interestingly the ticket prices for the price, the, the next play to be performed was set. And I, I put them up there just to show how um, inflation has taken hold of Australia. $3, yeah. $2 and $1 for students. Pretty cheap. Yeah. Uh, I was the um, theatre's rep on the Kadima committee in those days. And I had to do the quite um, hard work of convincing them that they should um, fund us and, and pay us, um, you know, a decent uh, subsidy to run these shows. And we couldn't guarantee that we'd always pay them back. But uh, one of the earlier uh, hassles I had was that I put up an advertisement in the Jewish News and it had the Melbourne Yiddish Youth Theatre. And I didn't say anything about the Kadima. And they said, OK, we're not going to fund you unless you say, by der Kadima, at the Kadima. So I learned my lesson very quickly, how to um, handle patrons, yeah. Yeah, and I think um, one of the interesting topics that we discussed quite a bit was payment for um, either directors um, or people participating in plays. And it was a pretty hot topic, I think. And finally, we decided that we were going to stay an amateur group, but we would pay people if they were professionally involved in the theatre, which obviously Faye Mokotov was who made a living from her theatre work. So we did um, pay her um, for some of the work that she did. And we also paid Dobka Apolovich for the translations of The Price. The next play was Arthur Miller's The Price, translated by Dobka Apolovich. Isaac Appel recalls how it all began. My late mother, Dobka Apolovich, fell in love with Arthur Miller's The Price and set about translating it into Yiddish, which she finally completed in 1972. She asked 
the late Faye Mokoto to direct the play, and Faye assembled a cast which included herself, Leon Griffenberg, Henry Nussbaum, and myself, Isaac Appel. And we set about rehearsing and getting ready for the play, which eventually was produced in 1974 at the Classic Cinema, which was then already the Kadima. Faye was a fabulous director and a great actor. And the team, together with all sorts of other production groups, put on the play on a number of occasions. The play, of course, by Arthur Miller is about family dynamics, the price of furniture and the price of one's decisions. We were proud to be able to put the play on and to learn the sophisticated Yiddish that Dobber had uh, inculcated into her translation. And Alex, here we have some photos of the rehearsal, or one photo yep. at least. I have another one, but it's very similar to that. And, and you're all um, this... greyed up to look much older. <laughs> yeah, and I also had hair then. <laughs> yeah, now I, I remember the, because it was a, a play about that furniture that, um, and, and the trying to sell the furniture, me buying it as the old uh, um, person who was trying to, a uh, 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 valuer of, of furniture. Um, Faye put together some fabulous antiques that she got from various stores. And um, I remember the set was quite complicated. Um, she was very pedantic about how that was all set out. Um, mm. uh, Dobka's Yiddish was very intense and uh, quite um, a complicated Yiddish. She had a, quite an academic Yiddish and we had to call on her quite often to help us understand the context of the Yiddish and, uh, and also some of the emotions and character interplay in the, in the dialogues were very uh, powerful. And it, it, I think we rehearsed a lot longer than we originally intended to, to try and get yeah. it right. And then- yeah, I got a feeling that the uh, two weeks at Kinneret, uh, two weeks at the Kinneret came in and actually disrupted your preparations for this. Correct, that's right. Because yes. of the visit of the Israeli directors, director. But um, I do remember that uh, it was uh, very well acted and very obviously a, a, not a not an easy thing to do an Arthur Miller play at any time, let alone in Yiddish. Um, quite complex language and interchanges that it had in it. Yeah. Well, the next play was the Kishef Machen. Yes. Yeah, so the Kishef Machen uh, was staged here because the. Uh, a star of the Yiddish theatre, Dina Halpern, was invited over by the Kadima. And Dina Halpern, already in uh, pre-war Poland, was a very well-known star and a beauty. She was beautiful, a young, well, young woman in those days. And she played quite a leading role in the Purim Spieler, the film, the Purim player. And also in the Dibuk, she played the aunt of Leah, in the Dibuk, book so she was very well known and also played this play the kishef machen many times hundreds of times before the war in poland anyway she came over and we staged this play with the david herman theater and only some of us from the youth theater took part i was actually behind uh, as you can see a, a big uh, pot there, a, a big vase, and I was actually sitting behind there, and I played a hundred-year-old man. I had a beard down to my knees, a white beard. Avromchik was my name. You can also see Leon Griffenberg from the Youth Theatre there. Uh, and I remember also that Dina Halpern was very fiery sort of woman too, and she was directing it and, and star, starred in it. And she, I had this one or two lines when she'd give me a different line for the replique quite a few times and one time I just wasn't sure when my turn was coming and I hesitated and she yelled out at me and she said 
Was steist du wie allein in der Geulem? Darfst du besorgen jetzt? Yeah. And I said, was mir nicht gegeben, die richtige Linie. You didn't give me the right line for the replica. And she went off and she went, ich habe gespielt. Die Kirche machen 400 Mal in Warsche. Die Geist mir sagen. <laughs> she, you know, I played this 400 times. How dare you tell me this? <laughs> anyway, it was, it was quite a fiery sort of dire directing style she had. Okay. The next play was Zweimal Hundert Toisen. And I do remember this one quite well. And uh, this was a terrific design of, the, of both a poster and the ticket to get in, I believe. Yes, I'm, I remember doing this on, on Letra set way before computers. And we decided to design both the poster and the tickets like lottery tickets. Because of course the play is about winning a lottery. So I'm on the toys and 200,000 rubles. And anyhow, so uh, part of the uh, shtick was to um, get the audience to keep the tickets and we'd have a draw uh, at interval. And uh, we had some prizes for drawing out the lucky numbers of some of the um, audience, yeah. Well, Alex, here we see the stage of the Kadima in the classic theatre um, and there's a substantial cast on stage, some 20 folks. There was obviously as well uh, a large number of backstage uh, folks supporting the performances. The MYY team in it showed that there were about 900 persons that attended four performances at the classic was a fabulous performance and we enjoyed it very much. That's right. And it was done in a period costume. Uh, I remember uh, having, uh, you know, a top hat and uh, tails um, uh, in that one. And we all had period uh, style costumes, lovely dresses for the women. And it was staged in a kind of um, a realistic style of that period of uh, Sholem Aleichem's time, yep. It was a fun play and we enjoyed doing it very much. There was lots of singing and dancing. I even know that we learned a little bit of Russian because Sholem Aleichem had put Russian in and Michael Derembas had their picture there, had to say things like Izvinyte und Stotakoi. It was really a good play, lots of fun. Well, after hiatus of some nine years, the play, The Togbuch of Anna Frank, The Diary of Anne Frank, was translated by Dob Kapilovich, and the play was to be directed by Sluggo Charles Slukey. The photo here depicts a cast away for a long weekend of rehearsals, uh, including Dobke. Um, in retrospect, rehearsing in a pub was not a great idea. Uh, one was that we got onto the ABC News Evening News Bulletin that did a little story on it about how after, I think it was after 40 years or something like that, he was this play being staged. In Good evening and welcome to Scoop. I'm Lex Marinos. One of the most poignant and inspiring stories to be told about the experiences of the Jewish people during the Second World War is the diary that was kept by a young girl named Anne Frank. The diary has been translated into 50 or more languages and made into a film and a play. Yet it's only now that the story has been translated into Yiddish, the language of many of the people who suffered the persecution of the Hitler regime. The Yiddish youth group theatre in Melbourne approached Dobke Apolovich, a Melbourne poet, who agreed to translate the play into Yiddish to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. I, I do remember the play very well. I remember the complex set um, with some stairs and scaffolding to try and create the image of rooms within a room um, or within a, a, an apartment. I remember working very hard to get that scaffolding set up and getting those different levels you talked about as well. The following photos were taken from one of the performances with the names of the cast members on the photos. I found acting in this play difficult, was charged with high emotion and tension. Sluggo directed this play with great sensitivity and vision. Sluggo, Charles Lukey, 
uh, did a very very good job fine job and he had already staged it as a school production very successfully before so to do this yiddish one was like a, um yeah like a reprise for him but he did it very well that there was quite a lot of interest in the uh, ethnic media and uh, sbs and i think someone from the polish program came out and he was himself a dramaturg and he said it was the most authentic um moving piece of holocaust era theater that he'd ever seen alex we did get an interesting review in the australian jewish news from Herschel Bachach entitled As Men Will, Can Men, sort of a testimony to the efforts of the MOYT. With a strong will, you can achieve. So let's show uh, some seven minutes of extracts from the actual performance. Hat der Karl Eif, der Zarte, als man kriegt und nicht genug zu essen, kennt sich vorstellen, drei Razzias, fast sieben Menschen, mit euch acht. Herr Van Dan, ihr wisst nicht, wo tut sich in Dreusen. Wir dürfen nicht wohnen. Wenn ihr weiß, was kommt vor, in Amsterdam werden verschwunden hunderte Reden. Die Hollensteins, die Wessels, sie geben zu wissen, an die und die sollen kommen in jüdische Theater, in einer bestimmten Folge, und in der und der Show. Und die welche melden sich nicht, schleppen sie ein Reus von der Stimme und verschicken sie in dem Teufellager nach Hause. Wir haben gar nicht gewusst, dass die Lage hat sich so verärgert. Ich war da jetzt, was habe ich erzählt? Efsche hat ihr etwas gehört wegen die Devils. Was soll mit seinem Kind geschehen? Seine Tochter Joppi ist mein bester Hörte. Schon weg. Weg? Ja, zusammen mit noch. Das kann nicht möglich sein. Leben uns hat gewohnt, haben ich Woche Wagner. Ähm, Lass mir es ablegen auf später. Ich meine, als jeder einer will etwas fragen. Aber ich meine, es ist besser, als Herr de Sel soll sich früher einordnen. Fahr noch ein Freud. Ah, danke. Ich habe mir gefallen, sehr wenig Sachen. Es tut mir leid, dass wir haben nicht kein besonderes Zimmer für euch. Ich hoffe, es wird sich nicht viel und schlecht. Und nach noch ein Freud will ich euch informieren wegen unserem strengen Regulamin. Äh, Anna, weiß Herr de Sel sein Zimmer bitte. Bitte mit mir, Herr Dussel. Ich weiß nicht, wie er so ausdrücken, eine Bambakeit zu erhalten. Es hat mich getroffen wie eine Bombe. Ich habe ständig sich vertragt wie Holländer. Geboren in Holland, auch mal Tatte und der Seide da geboren. Jetzt nach so vielen Jahren, seid mir Meuchel. Der Peter, der Himmel. A prächtiger Tag. Guck, wie schein es sind in die Wolken. Weißt du, was ich tue, wenn ich der viel der Moment, dass ich kein mehr nicht sein verspart? Ich trage sich herüber in Dreusen. Ich sehe sich. Ich verspaziere im Park, wo ich flieg oft gehen mit dem Paar. Weißt, es ist eine wunderbare Sache, und du kennst in dein Gedank sich herüber tragen in Dreusen. Kennst du dort haben, wo ist dein Herz gelöst? Ich kann doch mehr nicht Deutsch halten. Ich soll mich kommen, keine schnelle Änderung. Aber wir sollen... Ich wollte gewinnen leichter, wenn du willst gewinnen, ein Gläubiger, Peter. Nein, Dank, nicht dir. Ach, ich meine nicht, dass du darfst sein und orthodox. Gläubigen in Gehennem und Geneiden und andere Sachen. Doch eine gewisse Religie, Gläubigen in Epis. Wenn ich tracht wegen dir, wie gut du bist. Und die Gutkeit von allen Menschen, welche mich kennen. Herr Krale, Mieb, Dirk, sei resikieren vor uns jeden Tag sein eigen Leben. Wenn ich trage, wegen die alle gute Sachen, verschwind von mir die Schreck. Ich gefinde sich allein. Es klingt sehr schein. Aber wenn ich der Tracht sich berg will, guckt uns an. Schon zwei Jahre, wenn wir sitzen da verspart und warten, sie sollen uns kommen nehmen. Und so lieb was? Wir sind nicht die Einzigen, welche haben ständig gelitten. Eibig haben Menschen gelitten. 
einmal ein Rasse, das zweite Mal ein andere. Und doch... Das macht mir nicht leichter. Ja, ich verstehe, Peter, wie schwer es ist, bei mir in sich zu glauben, wenn Menschen tun, ob es solche schreckliche Sachen. Aber es kann sein, dass die Welt geht durch eine in Phase. So wie ich mit meiner Mutter. Es wird vorbeigehen. Er schert in hunderte Jahren herum. Nur der Tag wird kommen. Trotz allem, gläubig, als Menschen sehen im Tag gut. Jetzt ist kommen eine Änderung. Nicht in tausend Jahren. Aber Peter, wenn du was geguckt hast, wie euch ein Risiken herumnimmt. Und gedenkt, als wir sind ein bloß ein Stäuberle davon. Hört noch, wie wir sparen sich. Also wie zwei der Boxen in der Rani. Guck auf den Himmel. Wie schein es ist. Wenn wir wollen einmal rausgehen von denen, will ich... Jedes Mal, wenn die Bahn hat sich abgestellt, ist mir nach Reus und ich hätte einen gefragt, wo sind ihr gewesen? Sind ihr gewesen? In Auschwitz, in Buchenwald, in Mauthausen. Und ich habe schon gesehen, mein Freund, er geht's gesehen, mein Mann, mein Sohn, meine Tochter. So, ja, warum habe ich sich bewusst? Wegen Zeug von meinem Freund, Marco, wie waren das? Peter, du selbst. Aber wegen Anna habe ich noch alles gehofft. Nächten bin ich gewöhnt. In Rotterdam. Ich habe sich da wusst wegen der Freude. Was ist gewöhnt zusammen mit Anna und Bergen? Das. Jetzt weiß ich schon. May Mokotov became an accomplished actress with the Australian Performing Group and La Mama Theatre. Sadly, she became ill in 1983 and passed away early in 1984. She was an inspiration and an energy source for the foundation of MYYT. A tragic loss. played a, a pivotal and energetic role in establishing the MYYT and was very generous with her time and talent, um, knowledge and dedication. I think all of us had something to learn from her presence, both on the stage and as a director. Yes, and, and importantly too, that she was part of the Australian Performing Group, the APG, Prem Factory fame, which led a revival, really, of uh, modern Australian uh, innovative theatre. And that gave us inspiration to be more innovative and to be more involved in theatre. So, yes, as you said, she deserves a lot of credit for and, the MYAT. And in July 1984, we held a tribute concert for Faye Mokotov. Yes. 
the Melbourne Yiddish Youth Theatre with the Pram Factory actors, some of them very well known actors in the Australian, uh, of the, on the Australian stage. And we did a combined tribute, very moving and very uh, well, you know, presented tribute to Fai Mokotov and, and uh, yes, yeah, certainly um, was um, something that we, I think, had to do and did well. The next play by the MYYT was The Stern from Broadway, The Sunshine Boys. Isaac Appel was the director and he recalls the following. The tragic loss of Faye was felt by all of us deeply, but we resolved to continue with our theatre work. And after we paid a tribute to her in a concert at the Kadima in 1984, Dopke, my mother, translated Neil Simon's The Sunshine Boys which she called Die Sterben from Broadway, and asked me to direct that play. This was the first play that I'd ever directed and I felt the responsibility keenly. Well, Alex, I remember that this play, The Sunshine Boys, challenged my acting ability with lots of dialogue and sound timing required to fuel the comedy. And I noticed there in the credits a large entourage of folks up front of the curtain and backstage to make this play work were required. And I know that you as a producer had challenges putting the set and these required assistance together. Notice at the bottom of the credits that there were Skiff Helfer and YYT Juniors, as well as the indefatigable Yossel Winkler, who managed ticketing for us. Yes. I remember that um, it was we built a set of a sort of New York apartment, and I remember going and getting these very large photos and large of the New York skyline, the skyscrapers to um, make it in the window, to po paste it in a window. So it looked like a, an apartment building in New York City. Uh, so that was quite exciting. Uh, I think it was well, very well done. I mean, you and Leon played off each other brilliantly. Joe was very good too. All around, they're a really enjoyable show. Fantastic. And, and, and Isaac goes on to explain some of the bits about the, the play. We had a fabulous team of people in Melbourne Yiddish Youth Theatre and we put together a cast including in the main roles Henry Nussbaum, Leon Griffenberg and Joe Tiggle. We worked together as a group enormously well and we put on a play which we were very proud of and which ran for six times at the Kadima to much acclaim. The Sunshine Boys is a play about two famous comedians, Lewis and Clark. My mother changed Clark to Kluger, who were very successful in the vaudeville era, but off stage they couldn't stand each other. Nephew of Willie, Ben, played by Joe Tiggle, endeavours to get the two together for an opportunity on a television show, and the comedy ensues. We all love doing Die Stern from Broadway, and it's in our memory forever. Yes, the audience reaction was was very clear. They enjoyed it thoroughly, had a good laugh. And uh, I must say that, uh, you know, we, the comedies, we, we did very well, um, for maybe even better than the dramatic pieces. It suited our kind of nature and, and our age group. Alex, we have six minutes of extracts from the performance to show. Noch eine Frage, Onkel. Eubes ist wirklich gewesen, er sei schlecht. Ist wie ein Säuerte gekannt, aushalten und zusammenarbeiten ganze 43 Jahre. Das ist der Sohn, der Kischer. Er ist gewesen ein Unikum, nicht das ein Gleichen. Wie künstlerisch er gekannt, übergeben ein Witz, ein Anakdot. Jedes Wort sein ist gewesen ein Perl. Er hat gelangt, meine Gedanken und ich seine, zusammengeschmolzen, also wie ein Mensch. Nein, nein, er ist gewinnt besser. 
Der Beste, verstehst du? Ich verstehe. Er sagt, ja, hat keiner nicht gewagt, ihm anzureden. Als Mensch hat keiner nicht gewollt, ihm anzureden. Also, Geil Hensel ist es gar nicht geworden. Weil Louis Speit. Weißt du, wenn ich hab das letzte Mal gespielt mit ihm? Ja, mit elf Jahren zurück. Mit elf Jahren zurück, dem 27. Juli und der Ed Sullivan. Der Nummer hat geheißen der Doktor. Du hast es sicher nicht gesehen. Nein. Aber ich habe gehört, dass es es gewesen Sehr gut. Nicht sehr gut. Ausgezeichnet. Hat heute hat es gekannt, euch wecken. Der, der sich geackt ist gegangen, aber um 8000 Mal. Ich kann einmal verfällt. Ist der Weg von Jersey gewinnt schwer? Ich meine, die Reise her. Nein, meine Tochter hat mir da hergeführt. Sie hat ein Karl. Oh, sehr fein. Ja, 1972 Kreisler, ein schwarzer Karl. Oh, der Kreisler ist ein gut. Riesenkarl. Das ist der größere Imperial. Ich kenne die Karl. Mein Tochter ist Karl. <lacht> Nein, wenn ich bin gewesen, das letzte Mal in Kalifornien, habe ich ausgeborgt, der Kreisler. Oh, meine Tochter hat einen eigenen. Ich verstehe ich. Guckt ihr oft kein New York? Nein, ein zum ersten Mal in den letzten zwei Jahren. Ah, Säuger. Nur no, wie gefällt er es da? Meine Tochter hat mir da hergeführt. Nein. Hat sich da eine Sache geändert vor der Zeit? Ja, es ist nicht äh, mein New York. <lacht> verstehe ich. Herren, dann haben dieselbe Sachen kein Schumänderung über die Kasse 43 Jahre. Ist doch auf alle gut. Oh, wir haben mich schon bei Mail geendigt. Ist du was dafür nicht ändern? Leut mir, also bin ich draußen, dir persönlich zu treffen, aber kennt dich, dass du bist zu lang gesessen in New Jersey auf dem Gangtop. Was meinst du damit zu sagen? Was ich will sagen ist, als das. Durch mein Fenster sehe ich alles, was tut sich auf der Welt. Buchstäblich alte Menschen, junge, gute Menschen, schlechte. Ich sehe Karkatastrophen, Ambulanzen, Menschen addicte zu all die schwarzen Jahren. Ich sehe Menschen, was warfen sich von Stocken. Ich habe offen meine Augen und sehe alles. Und du? Der Milchträger und der Gärtner. Ja? Ist das die Sibbe, für was du willst, darf gesorgen, rein? Herzlich zu zu mir. Na, wie denke ich, finde ich da noch einmal zu uns auf dem Zimmer. Ist der bekannte Dossiger Ausdruck, die Lage ist, also, 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 Jesus von ich bin inmitten. Und du hast ja gehört, das auch Ausdruck. Wo ein Sach verläuft, die andere, und du hast allein nicht keine Ahnung, wegen was du rechst und was es tut sich mit dir. Du bist der Tumult. Aber was es soll nicht sein, bin ich dämmert nicht gewesen, der war hat sich abgetroffen. Von was bist du weg? Verstehe, müd geworden. Ja, bist doch weiß geworden, zurückgestanden, ausgeweckt. Aber nicht dir, ständig mitgegangen mit der Zeit und war ständig erseitern. Jetzt so hast du gearbeitet mit mir zusammen, hast du Tage gewohnt, reich, in der Wohnung von fünf Zimmern. Und jetzt fragst du nach aus, dieselbe brillige Pyjama von der Mauer. Ich bin nicht mehr hoch, falls er in deine Stoß ihm. Darf sein zufrieden, als der Herr ist am wenigsten von mir. Wer will denn mit dir anhalten? Ich hab's auch nicht bei dir herumzukriegen. Also ich schnell will dir das anklappen, weil ich sagen herein. Und dann kannst du es nicht vernehmen, hast du nicht da reinkommen. Kannst gar nicht ändern an mein der Läuben nicht, weil 50% von dem Akt gehört zu mir. Ist doch alles in Ordnung. Da herein wird man zurechnen, wenn zu mein heilig. Das Herr sich gut zu, was ich will dir sagen. Euch wirst du noch einen Anklapp nennt für einen Rhein, weil ich darf ein Jahr reinkommen. Noch nicht allein. Ich will mit sich mitbringen, ein Advokat. Von Rennen. Von New Jersey. Von dort darfst du sein zufrieden, aber du kannst mit sich mitbringen, ein Kalb. Gegen dir kann ich in jedem Gericht gewinnen. Auf viele mit einem Kalb. Der Finger! Hört schon wieder an 
Ficken Schwinge! Sagen dich dir dem ganzen MS, aber sie von meiner Arbeit nicht abgesagt, nicht retired, noch entlaufen. Und wirst du euch mir noch einmal aufregen, dein Finger? Kennst du das mit dem Gedanken ein? Aber glänzende Idee! Oh, ich bin mit Schuge! Ich bin mit Schuge! Ich bin mit Schuge! Ich hasse es, dass euer Land lieber bis wann es dein sein lasst es eben! Ich kenne seine Sicht, bin Tacke mit Schuge! Aber du bist ausgewebt! Weißt du, was das meint? Da war ich für mir kein gleichen Entwerf. Ich schon gemeint, wenn er drückt, keinen von dir meine ich werden kann. Aber er ist geweckt, meint, dass du Zeugs mehr zu gar nicht. Und das kommt vor mit dir, Mister. Oh, trag sich ab vom Telefon. Hallo? Ist es meine Tochter? Was macht mein Eppes? Ist es sie, meine Tochter? Still so sein, ruhig. Setz nicht, dass ich rede, dass ich rede zu werden. Dann kennst du sich heute für eine 5 Sekunden für einen Mensch. Eine 5 Sekunden für einen Mensch. Hallo? Ein Moment. Dein Tochter. <lacht> Hallo? Hallo, Teil. The next event, which had a significant MYYT contribution, was Niggin, a celebration of Yiddish song. A huge production, over 70 people in the cast, and many, many people backstage. Isaac Appel explains how Niggin came into being. The Hebrew University of Jerusalem had put together an anthology of Yiddish folk songs, and they had as one of their consultants the late Theodore Bickel. Ron Caston, who was an eminent QC and who was involved with the Friends of the Hebrew University, approached me to see if I could take charge of a launch of the wonderful volumes that the Hebrew University had prepared. I agreed to do that and decided that the best way to do it would be to have a concert which was to be organised at the Palais Theatre in August 1988. That was the year of the Australian Bicentenary and there were all sorts of celebrations and there was a Jewish Festival of the Arts. In order to have the concert at the Palais successful, we arranged for the script to be prepared by Arnold Zabel and Michael Gawenda and for the direction to be in the control of Charles Slukey, better known as Sluggo. I was the producer. The photo that you see now on the slide on the screen is of a Niggin cast rehearsal conducted at the Kadima. I was particularly proud to be able to be sharing the stage with my daughter, Alia. It is important to acknowledge the work of the folks that were backstage and in front of the curtain. John Warshawski, who designed the set for the Palais, uh, the band that was led by Julian Duband and the ubiquitous and talented pianist Tommy Kalinsky, who accompanied Theodore Bickel, violin Morris Gradman, and Lionel Morocchi, who played the clarinet. The researchers who helped the writers, Dobka Apolovich, Rivka and Romak Mokotov, and Essie Lustig, who were acted as stage manager for the production and then there was Debbie Jacobson and Lily Cochan who helped concert coordination. A fabulous effort by all. In order for the first part of the concert to be successful, we assembled a team of local creative singers, dancers and musicians and demonstrated the importance and the value of the Yiddish song, Niggin. The second half of the concert was a concert by the late Theodore Bickel. I had negotiated with Theodore's management for him to be, come to Australia and do a one co concert appearance and he agreed to do so. At that time I was the Vice President of the Kadima and so this became a joint venture between the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and the Kadima. The Palais was sold out. There were over 2,500 people who came to see the concert and I arranged for it to be filmed so that we could have a wonderful documentary of what was a great concert. It was a tremendous event and we'll never forget it. We have the pleasure to present to you now an extract from the concert featuring Yasha Sher, the ensemble 
and Theodore Bickell. Der heutige Abend zeichnet sich uns damit, was für eure Augen war und drei Deures ausspielen und aussingen, Tacke von die Eutzres, was sie wird gefinden in die vier Bände, was der Hebräische Universität hat herausgegeben. Nicht voran kein Sacherter in der Welt, kein Zutog, was können als uns verweisen. Da lassen wir uns Tacke bezeichnen wie ein Nest wie der Gilgo von unser idischen Nigen. Hinter mir, hinter dem dortigen Vorhang, befindet sich eine Gruppe von einer 70, der größte Teil Jugendlicher, welche seinen Gerät euch zu verweilen. Zwischen sie befindet sich euch mein Eiligo. Ihr werdet euch sicher wundern, dass er so ein junger Mann wie ich auf schön an Ende kommt. Dort befinden sich euch eure Kinder und eure Ähnlichkeit. Als ihr rum als wir oben für euch, weil wir bringen nicht bloß Gesange von unserer Vergangenheit. Wir wollen nicht nur bei denen eine Welt, was ist gewesen und mehr nicht doch. Ihr werdet euch hören Lieder von Heinz und eure Gesange von morgen. Aber da ist Melbourne nicht Barsche und nicht Wilne. Aber warum? Wir versichern euch, als ihr wird sein, überrascht. In einem harten australischen Boden sind ein paar Pflanzen geworden, Säumen, die dosige Säumen haben sich umgenommen und haben gebracht Fruchten. Sie haben sich einander geblieben in gesunde Bäume, und prächtig schöne Blumen. Und noch etwas. Dem heutigen Abend wird bescheinen der weltberühmte Künstler Theodor Bickel, welcher wird ausführen <lacht> den zweiten Teil von unserem heutigen Programm. We really are coming to the end of our program, but since, since the wonderful young, and they were all young people, of the first half of the program were so terrific, I'm going to call them back on, and we're all going to take a last look at a song and a bow together.
Ah, the Megillah. Yes, now the, the second staging of the you know, wonderful Megillah by Itzik Manga and beautiful music by Dolph Seltz. And uh, for this one, we decided uh, to stage it in a kind of oriental, um, you know, thousand and one night setting, but also of masks and so on. Uh, had a beautiful set and very beautifully lit. But we also uh, wrote, I remember you and I, Henry, wrote an English kind of translations in the style of the Yiddish to give the non-Yiddish speaking or part of the audience more of a clue about what was going on, what was being said uh, through, by the narration. So that was an additional thing, but it was very colorful and, and you know, full of uh, joy and bounce and um, movement uh, and also a very large cast. Yes, unfortunately, the only um, cast list that I have has the scribbles of the uh, director on it. <laughs> and But we do have some photos from some of the rehearsals in the hall at the Kadima there, and the cast looking rather cheerful about a number of things. Um, it was, um, uh, again, for me, an opportunity to be on the stage with Alia, my daughter, which was made me very proud to be able to share that opportunity um, with her. And um, we, um, uh, we, do, we certainly uh, worked incredibly hard, but also we had a lot of hitches with uh, costumes. I remember we last minute rush to the Australian opera uh, stocks to get these wonderful costumes uh, because uh, our promised costumes didn't arrive. Somebody was going to make them and didn't happen. And the same thing with the set. Um, that was... Um, you know, as if we planned and we had to, in the last minute, get some professional set builders to do it. But in the end, it was a very colourful and joyful performance. I'd like to mention something about Sluggo's direction. Um, he had great vision and uh, certainly a talent for bringing in professional skills like Rowan Thornton, who helped with the lights and the sound and still helps out with the In One Voice concerts. He gave a license to the actors to develop your own character. Uh, his direction was contextual rather than directive. Uh, I think Faye Mokotov would have been very proud of how this version of the Megillah turned out and how the MYYT had matured into a strong, competent troupe. Um, we have five minutes of extract from the actual performance to show. Hope you enjoy it. Und du hast Barone, ein Seiten-Rügel die Tiere. Und du hast Barone, ein Weilen zu dir. Melch ist ein Schäfer und der zwei 
Jason, we'll shoot her, and then we'll hang her. Yeah! Now that's the e Jason e hang her. Ich bin nicht gehört, ist zu ich liegen. 
is from Miles Davis' song Blue and Green from the album Kind of Blue. It was used in the last play that Sluggo directed for the Salt Pillar Theatre Group, My Name is Usha Lev. It was incidental and scene-changing music. He loved it and so did many of the Salt Pillar Theatre folk. They went out and bought the album afterwards. Sluggo was a dear friend of mine. We worked together on many plays, commemorations and other events. He is sorely missed. I miss his passion, his energy for drama and for theatre. Well, Sluggo, Slutsky took over where Faye had uh, left off, really. So we were lucky that we had somebody that was of that energy and that ability to motivate people to step in uh, and to do the plays that followed. So, you know, Kolakavod, Kovod Zainondenk, as we say here. The next play. Yes, and now this followed on with uh, after Nigen, which was very much about the, the story of the Yiddish uh, folk songs, of course, and how it traveled around the world, uh, migrated and so on. And uh, Arnold um, was the commissioned writer of this one, Boahin Zolichgain, the story of Jewish migration in the uh, 19th and 20th centuries. And uh, this was also a very large cast, uh, a musical, but with English narration and Yiddish songs uh, of migration fitted into it. And also very much enjoyed by uh, audiences, uh, very much uh, appreciated, I think, that th this play. Yes, uh, I, I remember um, having a small narration piece with it, but I remember most of our younger folks being very involved and uh, um, taking terrific uh, parts in this uh, play. And, and actually, what a, what a terrific play it would be to put on today, given the refugee and migration uh, issues in the world. Where shall I go? It would be quite fitting. Yeah, it resonates today as well. I mean, it, it you know, go, went up to, I think, um, the refugees of post-Holocaust, World War II refugees. And uh, this kind of, uh, you know, reflected the audience, really, most of the audience and the children of those refugees, Jewish refugees in Australia. Alex, we've just seen photo extracts from the performance itself, but I recommend that nobody miss from the video extract now of Tommy and Helen, a prachtig, magical performance. Oyser gewenlach. Where to begin, what to leave out, what to put in. What did you say was the concert date? May 8th? Of course it's not too late after all. The world was created in six days. A mere concert should just be child's play. Somehow the impossible deed was done. The result? A meshugana balagan. A goulash, a chaunt left overnight to stew and served up hot in one concert for you. Vuayin Zolech Gain, a journey through Yiddish song. Eskizund, enjoy, it should not take too long. Oh, my mom, she's giving me a high. 
Now, following on from Voahin Zolichkain and, and the question of migration, um, I got this idea that we really didn't do anything to do with Australia. And uh, there'd been celebrations of, I think, Australian, I don't know, 200 years of um, European settlement here, whatever. And I thought, well, why don't we have a look at the history of uh, Jewish migration? And uh, when I started researching it, I was absolutely staggered how much contribution had been made by Australian Jews since the first fleet arrived here. And uh, starting with uh, Esther Abrahams, which is the beginning of Mazeltov Cobbers, which be who became for a while the first lady of Australia married to Governor Johnson. But um, I was absolutely flabbergasted by so many interesting characters Ike Solomon, on which uh, the story of uh, Fagan, of Oliver, uh, was based on uh, many others. The first Australian composer was supposedly a Jew, and it went up right up to the um, Sir John Monash, of, as then, when he was then known as uh, John, just John Monash, who was the son of German and Polish migrants couple, and uh, most likely um, knew Yiddish as well because his, his father wrote, I think, or his mother, I can't remember, wrote Yiddish letters to family at home. And so it ended at sort of the beginning of the 20th century with the young uh, John Monash um, as the, the last um, kind of person mentioned in this play. But we also had the gold rushes, uh, interesting scenes from the gold rush, um, contacts with Aborigines, uh, all sorts of characters popped up in this. And again, as uh, evidence on this slide, a, a huge entourage of people, both performers and backstage, um, getting involved to make the production a success. Yes, and I, I had the um, good fortune to recruit Leon Gettler, quite a wit with, uh, with language and um, with ideas. So uh, between us, we uh, wrote this play quite quickly. Uh, again, it was English narration mainly with a little bit of Yiddish in it. I remember great scene of you and uh, Jerry Diner arriving at the gold fields and, and speaking Yiddish and the licensee uh, officer not being able to understand what you're saying and you not, not understanding what he was saying and, and getting into very funny mix-ups. Um, so, you know, this was again with, with uh, beautiful Yiddish songs uh, fitted around the uh, dialogue of the play, yeah. And again, we've we'll, got some footage from this, which we will um, show the audience now. Yiddishes were always sweet on this place, even when we first came here. Free ticket, chains included. Just like back in Egypt. <laughs> Funny thing about those chains. Now in other countries that would be looked upon as a source of shame. But not here. Not in the strike me lucky country. Now, fate had it that Esther Abrams, a poor Jewish convict girl, gave birth to some top-notch Australians. Some of them, maybe even sitting right here. 
right next to you. Ike Solomon's the name. Born in the East End of London as it's Huck Ben Spear. Although some of you might remember me as Fagin in a Charles Dickens potboiler about that little grotta Oliver Twist. I nearly sued Dickens for that. You can't trust journalists. Ikey? Ikey is for the crank. He finally decided to show your face in Hobart. It's my darling wife, Anne. Come on, my oyster, my man. Oyster, schmoyster, hand over that loot. You <coughs> owe me, you got it. This guy, pretty good living on a groschen. After I gave him a slip in London, I had to pay those Jews who hit me in Tottenham. Then I had to pay the bargemen who took me to Denmark. What can you do? Everywhere you go, there's parasites. Parasites. <laughs>
Some are higher. Mm. I, would, I was not involved with this, um, but I do remember it was encapsulated most of the plays that we'd done uh, at the, as the MYYT and some other uh, events. Um, I think I was part of the audience. I definitely wasn't part of the cast. So perhaps you can elaborate. I've got um, a lot of memories of this one. I just remember that it, like you said, it was gathering together sort of the best of the, <laughs> the previous plays. Uh, so it was, it, you know, more or less in the style that uh, a lot of the cabarets and so on are presented in today at the Kadima, uh, very much on a small stage with a smaller cast and much uh, less production values to have to worry about and costs <laughs> much cheaper, obviously, to produce as well. Yeah. Well, the next uh, bit was in um, Fiddler Eufen Dach and Arlette, uh, Pat, who also um, directed this, uh, Samachaya, directed Fiddler Eufen Dach, and she actually talks uh, about her experience as a director and with the MYYT. The history of the Melbourne Yiddish Jugendgruppe is very much part of my personal history. Its introduction for me began in high school when, through my connection with Skiff, I became part of the new wave of Yiddish theatre. Our first production was The Megillah by Itzik Munger, directed by the hugely talented Faye Mokotov. Although in fact it began much earlier as part of my genetic makeup through my father, of Raymond Putt, who was involved in Yiddish theatre well before then. Later, through various MYYT productions as a cast member, backstage crew, director and producer. This was an incredible learning experience, which strongly influenced my decision to become a teacher of theatre and drama, amongst other methods. The influence of the MYYT brought together different age groups, and a variety of community members from second and third generation Aussies, post-war immigrants from countries in Europe, Asia, the Middle East, and more recently, Africa, who settled in Australia. Certain productions reflected this diversity as we presented both original and classic pieces of theatre. The productions were also a showcase of the enormity of talent available, and our ability to fill the gap for Melbourne Jewry, which in later years reached out to the wider community through bilingual productions and the use of surtitles for non-Yiddish speakers. Our diversity was also reflected in some of the production crew. For example, our musical director for Fiddler on the Roof, Jonathan Harvey, would drive from Bendigo several times a week to attend rehearsals and had no Yiddish background at all. Thankfully, we had the wonderful Hannah Marocki on board as our Yiddish consultant. And of course, with every event involving Jewish people, there is never a shortage of those willing to give an opinion. Fiddler proved to be a huge success as we played to packed houses. No surprise there when you had a cast led by the talented Yossel Tiggle and Elisa Gray as our Tevye and Golda. On the second night, we had an issue as two seats had allegedly been sold twice. In fact, the elderly couple who saw the show on opening night enjoyed it so much they doctored their tickets and changed the date so they could see it again. These forgers would not be moved from their seats. Despite their aged, their advanced age and diminutive size, we were no match for them. A lasting testimony in the history of Yiddish theatre. Oh, 
you dreamt, and I will tell you what it meant. It was terrible. Tell me. All right, only don't be frightened. Tell me. This was my dream. In the beginning, I dreamt we were having a celebration of some kind. Everyone we knew was there. Musicians too. Right in the middle of my dream, in walks your grandmother Tycho on the show. Grandmother Tycho? How did she look? A woman who's there 30 years. She looks very good. Naturally, I went over to Greek, and she said to me, Nuzzle dog, nuzzle dog. I had a neck in my nuzzle dog, nuzzle dog. I made a mabrilla, there ain't the carilla, the Schneider model come royal. Model? A nella kinder sin, nuzzle dog, nuzzle dog. I eat it with a skin, nuzzle dog, nuzzle dog. Or he's in case they're not, when said I want a dog, the Schneider model come royal. A tailor? She must have heard wrong. She meant a butcher. Was sagt der Herr Bombarde? Nicht kein Schneider. Das sind der Katzenbombe. Was er heißt mein Laser Wolf.
Those old teachings. You said this for the very best. I couldn't possibly be any better. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> Noah, dank, lieber Zuschauer. Thanks for watching. And firstly, let me apologize for not mentioning everyone who was involved in MYYT. Over the 20 years or so, some hundreds of dedicated and talented contributors really deserve mentioning, but I think the video would extend too long. And Alex, I think we should also mention the sponsors that we had for many of our performances. There were Berlin Hosiery Mills, Pratt Foundation, L.R. Reed, Jet Set, Liberman, Finks, and many other personal donors who contributed to make those performances viable. Yes, indeed. Without the money, unfortunately, uh, art and culture can't flourish. And it's the same yeah. for the Yiddish theatre as well. And uh, what a journey, Henry. You've done a wonderful job putting this together. I know you've worked many, many hours but it's a great testament to a terrific bit of uh, Yiddish history in Melbourne. And uh, I'm sure that uh, within the organizations of the Bund and the Kadima and the Yiddish schools, let's not forget them, uh, the energy and talent goes on and it continues and there's always a hunger for Yiddish theater and we can now see exciting new directions blossoming again with uh, people like Galit Klaas and some of the uh, veterans uh, such as uh, Evelyn Crape, Elisa Gray, Tommy Kalinsky, and others, Joe Tiggle. So hopefully they will go on and continue this wonderful tradition uh, further into the future. Yeah. And thank you, Alex, for embarking on this project with me. It was a significant part of our lives. Um, and I really, I think to encapsulate um, the effort and energies that were involved, Herschel Bachach, in his review of the Togbuch von Anna Frank, wrote in Yiddish, as men will, can men. With a strong will, you can achieve. And I think that encapsulates what the MYYT was about. How's our Jesus? Is Zeit gesund. Zeit gesund und all das Gutes. <laughs> Gute Nacht.